Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and on behalf of Studio One Expert, I want to welcome you to the Beginner's Guide to Learning PreSona Studio One Version 3. These short videos are intended to help the absolute beginner whether you're coming over from another DAW to Studio One or whether you're brand new to any digital audio workstation, this is your first experience doing computer recording as it were. These videos will help you get up and running in Studio One very quickly, give you the basic foundation on how to use the basic functions of Studio One so you can start creating music in your home studio very quickly with no fuss and no muss. Be sure to check back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com as well as studio1expert.com on a regular basis as there will be more videos added to this series as time goes on. In today's video we are going to take a look at two different types of tracks in the console view, the bus channel or bus track and the effects channel or effects track. So let's head over to our song page here and in this uh, little example I created a quick uh, little drum loop or quick little drum bass and guitar loop so we can use this as an example this is what it sounds like and again it just created this quickly with the loops that came with Studio One which we'll talk in more detail about in another video Okay, kind of cool, kind of jazzy, kind of bluesy. <laughs> okay, so now in here you can see that we have three tracks here in our console view. We have the drums, we have the bass, and we have this little guitar track. So let's talk about what is a bus channel, okay? So a bus channel is a way that we can group, or we can send, excuse me, route the output of several tracks, one or more tracks, to a single fader so we can control the overall volume with that one fader. Let me show you what I mean. So first thing we want to do is let's down here in the right in the console area with our cursor, let's just right click and let's add a bus channel. Okay. Now it's going to put it here because we had this track highlighted. So we can just take this and drag it over to the right. Okay. So let's call this drums for this example. Okay. So this is our drums bus. Okay. Or bus channel or bus track, however you want to call it. Okay. So now what can we do with this? Well, if we wanted to route, let's say our drum track to this bus, we can control the volume of the drum track with this one fader. Now, you, now in this example, you'd say, well, you, why wouldn't you just control it with this fader? Well, that's true in this example, but let's say we had a multi-track drum session here. Let's say we had seven tracks. We had a kick track, a snare track, a hi-hat track, a couple of tom tracks, uh, an overhead track, and a room mic. We had seven different microphones here that all make up our drum kit. We can route the output of all those different tracks to this one fader, the bus channel, and we can control the volume of that overall drum kit with this one fader. And the way you change the output of a track, if you just highlight the track that you want to change, see where it says main right here? This right now is routed to the main outputs. It's routed to the master fader, which happens to be over here on the right hand side, okay, in Studio One. If I were to drop this down, click on it, you'll see that now we have a choice called drums. That is the drum bus that we just created. If I click drums and I play back this loop, and let me just solo the drums, so that's all we're listening to. You can see, we can turn down the bus channel, and although we still have signal coming in here, on the track itself, we don't hear anything because we're, we turned down the output of the, of the bus channel. Okay, so if you had, again, seven different microphones of drums and you had the relationship between all those microphones, the faders, where you liked them and you got a nice good mix on your drum kit, and then you wanted to turn the whole drum kit up or down as you're building your mix, instead of changing each one of those faders on those individual drum tracks, you can just route it to a bus and control the volume here. Okay, pretty cool. And if you were to expand, open up this little triangle here, you'll see that we can add inserts or effects, compression EQ, whatever effects we want to this bus. We can also send this to another track if we wanted to as well. We can also send it to, let's say, a reverb, for example, if we chose to do that. And we'll look at that in a second. Okay, so that's what a bus channel will do for us. Say we wanted to route, um, now we wanted to add, let's say, an effects track and say, well, what is an effects track used for? Well, let's add one and I'll show you what you can do with it. So if, again, we were to right click here in this in the console view, we can come down to add effects channel. Okay, and here it is. And we'll change the color to blue. Okay, let's call this reverb. Okay. So now we're going to send this drum track not only did we route the output to the to the drum bus, but now we're going to send it to a reverb. We're going to put a little reverb on that drum track, just for this example. So first thing we have to do in our effects track 
is we're gonna add a reverb. So now there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can come here, we can just click the plus button here in the inserts and we can find whatever effect we wanna put on our, um, on this effect track. And if we're into the PreSonus folder, we can go down to let's say the mix verb. And now here we got a mix verb here. Or the other way we can do it, if I were to remove this, is we can come over to the browser. We can go to our effects tab. We can go to our PreSonus folder and we can find the mix verb, which is right here. And we can left click and we can drag it here. Either way, it doesn't matter. There's two ways to do it. Okay, so now that we have a mix verb, let's just pick a preset. This is gonna be drums. So let's go to drum bus big. Sounds good to me. And let's turn up the size a little bit so we can hear the effect here. Okay, so now we have a reverb on this effects track. So you say, well, how do we get the drums to the reverb? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do this in this example. Now we can go over to the drum, let's close the reverb for a second. We can go over to the drum track and we can come to our send level now. And what we can do is we can click the little plus and you can see we have a choice called reverb because now we added this reverb effects channel. So we're gonna send some of the drum signal to the reverb. So let's do that. Okay, and this will, this will give you a little send level on how much of the signal you wanna send. Let's just bring it up close to zero dB for now. Okay, now if we were to play back this drum track, let's just solo it, which we did. Hear the reverb. Okay, so we're sending part of the, even though we're sending the, the main output of this drum track, we're sending it to the drum bus. We're also sending some signal to the reverb itself. If I were to turn this down, now we don't have any reverb, and if I were to turn it up. Okay, so again, imagine that you had six or seven tracks of drums here, all individual and multi-tracked. You can send each one of those tracks to the reverb, or you can only send some of the tracks to the reverb, and things like the kick drum, for example, you may not want any reverb on, so you don't have to send that particular element of the drum kit, but you can send the rest of the drum kit each individual track to this reverb. So that's what's cool about an effects channel is you can now set up things like reverbs and delays and you can send your individual tracks to that effect. Okay, so let's just take this off for a second. We're gonna remove it. Now, like I said a second ago, you can also, because the whole drum kit now is being sent to the drum bus, you can send the drum bus to the reverb as well and do the same thing. Okay, but just keep in mind that when you send the bus to the reverb, that all the tracks that make up what's coming to this bus will go to that reverb. So again, if you had a multi-track drum kit, which we don't here, but let's say again, you had seven tracks of drums, all individually mic'd up. If you send the bus channel, all of those tracks that make up that drum kit are gonna get equal amounts of reverb added to it. Whereas if you add it on an individual track, you can customize which elements of that drum kit you want to go to the reverb and which ones you may not want to go to the reverb. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we can remove this. Okay, now one last thing I'm gonna show you in this video and then we'll head on to another video is the differences between Really, the different, these are really just, they're called two different, one's a bus, one's an effects, but you can really, they can really be interchangeable. And what I mean by that is you could just add a bus channel and you can add the reverb right here. If you wanted to add the reverb right here, any of the drums that were going to the bus would have reverb on it. And you'd say, well, why do you wanna have, what's the difference then between a bus channel and an effects channel? How do they differ? Well, if I were to open up the expansion here of this mixer, the difference between a channel here, a bus channel and effects channel, is you can see that the bus channel allows you to send, has a send feature, where the effects channel you can see here does not. So if you then wanted to send this bus channel to another type of a track, whether it be an effect track or whether it be a different bus or an output, there's a multiple things you can do with it. You have that option here. You do not have that option with effects channels. Okay, effects channels, you don't have the ability to place a send. You only have the ability uh, to add inserts to it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And the other difference is on a bus channel, you can add in Studio One what's called the console shaper, which we'll talk about in a future video, which is kind of an analog console emulation. You can only add that to bus channels and to the main output. You can't add this to individual tracks or an effects track. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So in, in essence, if you did not have, and I'll close the mixer view here, 
if you did not use an effects channel, let's just remove this altogether. And let's say, you know, what I personally do is I use bus channels and I can use those as an effects channel. What do I mean by that? Well, let's add another bus channel here. I'm gonna right click and add another bus channel and I'm gonna color code it blue again just so we can see the separation between the two. And I'm gonna call this reverb. Okay, now on this track, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a reverb just like I did on the effects channel. Oops. So here's our PreSonus folder again, and I'm gonna come down to my mix verb and I'm gonna add a mix verb, just like I did the last time. We're gonna call it uh, Big Drum Bus Pig. I'm gonna turn up the size so we can hear it, okay? And now I have this reverb track, and just like last time, I can open up my drums, I can come to my send, I can still send it to the reverb track that I just created, and if I play back the drums. Yeah, that's pretty big drum reverb, huh? <laughs> but you see what I mean? Now you can still send your drum track to this reverb. So you can make a bus channel act like an effects channel, but you also now have the addition of a send feature that you can send this somewhere else if you chose to do that. You wouldn't always do that, but you can do that. So that's just another way to think about how you can use a bus channel. Okay, so that is the difference between a bus channel and effects channel and just one example on how you can use it. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to come back next time. We'll talk about things like VCA faders and other types of tracks. So for more tips, tricks, concepts, and techniques around everything home recording, be sure to head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and all also check back to studio1expert.com on a regular basis as that is the one-stop shop online for everything you need to know about Studio One. And until next time, this has been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.